and welcome to my channel, Bevy with Beth. I'm Beth and uh, today I'm here, I seem to be stuck a little bit <laughs> on the Yorkshire tea. I'm just, I'm in a tea zone. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm drinking. Uh, so yeah, it's the standard Yorkshire tea again. And um, today we're going to be talking about um, cortisol, what it is, uh, how it works. Uh, so grab yourself a drink and let's get into it. So we're going to be talking about um, cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And so it's one of those things that um, affects everybody. We, we're supposed to produce it. It's a good thing um, for us to kind of like get up and go, to deal with the kind of fight and flight situations. Um, but it's quite um, a problem in our modern society where we're dealing with fight and flight responses that aren't actual fight or flight um, and so it does have an impact on us and it definitely has an impact on us as PCOS sufferers um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the main way that it affects us in PCOS and that's because when we get into um, a stressful situation and we we release the cortisol then what it does is it actually helps um, our body to get energy by a process called gluconeogenesis and what this does is it takes um, molecules that are not glucose and transforms them through the process into glucose and that can then be provided to our muscles in order for us to be able to run fast or to fight well and have the energy to do that and so what that means is when we release that cortisol it causes a spike in our blood sugar levels um, which of course in turn initiates an insulin response in our body as well. Now the idea of that is that the insulin is supposed to also stop the cortisol so there can be a balance there because that's what our body wants to do ultimately is keep everything in balance. Um, but what happens is either we have insulin resistance which then doesn't make a difference or we're in this constant state of stress which means we're constantly producing cortisol which means this process is happening all the time and this causes a lot of problems as I'm sure you have felt yourself and you've probably seen people do it as well that we you know whether it's um stress in our job or whether it's um from over exercising so we're literally stressing our bodies out um it can be caused by anxiety it can also cause anxiety so it's another one of those situations like um chronic fatigue and depression where if you have chronic fatigue, you'll be depressed. If you have depression, you'll get chronic fatigue. And it's like, there's, they come together. Um, the same with anxiety. If you have high cortisol levels, it's going to cause you to have all of the, definitely the physical symptoms of anxiety. If you're experiencing anxiety, then those mental worries are going to trigger a physical response in your body which is going to heighten the anxiety and so we go on so that's a lot of fun um but also we produce it naturally when we first wake up in the morning it's part of the combination of um hormones that um cycle to help us in sleep and so as much as we need to get to sleep we do also need to wake up and so cortisol is one of the hormones that's released first thing in the morning to give us the idea that we need to get up um and you know it's giving us that energy to get up and go and get breakfast whether that's through foraging or hunting or cooking or whatever it is we need to get up get out of bed and have the energy to get to a place where we can eat that's kind of the idea of it so we all have high cortisol in the morning but we can then it's what it's supposed to do is then gradually get less and less throughout the day there are studies that show that it's um it's much lower first thing in the morning as opposed to noon and then again from noon to when we go to sleep we need that cortisol um the perfect system on our body is to have that cortisol very very low before we go to sleep because then it's going to cycle back up again ready for when we need to wake up 
so that's kind of how it's supposed to flow throughout the day of course what happens is um it's there when we wake up um and then maybe we don't eat breakfast maybe we do some exercise um and then we go to work and we're stressed out and that cortisol then stays at a high level and then as other stresses come in that's just going to build it up and that's where the real problems come from is that you've completely lost that balance and because it has such an impact on our blood sugar levels on our insulin levels and just our overall health <laughs> uh, then it's definitely something that we want to be um managing and trying to get into a nice cycle with it rather than just constantly overloading our bodies so i want to talk about a couple of ways that i found um doing a bit of research but then also from my own experience of kind of managing that cortisol level and definitely the first way um that i found through my research that i thought was really interesting um was actually eating breakfast so um, as I said, the cortisol causes a, a blood sugar level um, response in us. And so if we can then provide our body with that um, energy, instead of it having to rely on the um, gluconeogenesis for that energy, it's getting it from the food, then the cortisol naturally drops down because it, it's not necessary anymore. And I thought that was the most interesting um, because I have been trying intermittent intermittent fasting and I just haven't found that missing breakfast as my fasting period has been very comfortable for me and this feels like it makes a lot of sense that I want to get up and go um but then that get up and go I've got to keep going like seems to stick with me I think that makes a lot of sense so I definitely say um if you're finding that either your anxiety is very high or that you're not dealing with maybe the stress at work very well it feels a bit overwhelming straight away that definitely Having breakfast is going to be a really good way to kind of bring those cortisol levels down at the very beginning of the day when they're naturally at their highest. Um, but of course, as I said, there's going to be things through the day that cause that cortisol to rise again. So even if um, we get up and we have breakfast and the levels are doing their natural path to dropping, um, we can then come across stresses, whether that's um, in our journey to work, while we're at work, something pops up during the day that's going to stress us out then definitely and maybe quite obviously um meditation is amazing and i found this um a lot when i was um getting stressed at my job and i was actually not getting stressed for any good reason <laughs> so i did have a job that was very stressful for me because of my anxiety is very much social based and i was doing telesales that's quite a lot of socialising to do with complete strangers trying to convince them to buy something that they're not convinced they need. Um, so that was really stressful for me. So I, I left that job um, and was now doing a job where I didn't have any interaction with customers whatsoever. Um, so all the social anxiety side of it was gone. Um, I had no real job stress with crazy deadlines or anything like that. I could kind of get things done as I needed to. Um, so... I didn't feel like I needed to be stressed, but I was stressed anyway. I just stressed for being out of bed, mostly, I think. Um, and for me, definitely taking some time. So I did things like um, a lot of my work was very repetitive. And so I used to put music on that was calming, that was meditation orientated. And although I wasn't like fully meditating in myself, I was being very conscious with breathing putting in my work and trying to do that at like a steady pace. Um, so for me, obviously being just, you know, um, on a computer for eight hours a day, I was able to control my environment very much, um, which was easy for me to do. But I definitely also took time out at lunchtime to actually do just a five minute meditation. I did build that up to um, 10 to 15 minutes because I had a half an hour break. So that worked for me. But even just having that five minute break was all it took just to calm everything down and start to get those cortisol, cortisol levels dropping again um and i would definitely recommend um the app that i use is calm um, but there is also the app breathe and the reason i would really recommend breathe if you're new to uh, meditation is that they have a fantastic um one week course on how to start 
meditating and you just listen to it for about 10 minutes every day and it walks you through the initial steps. If you then want to pay for it, they they continue that course and you can go quite far into um, meditating. And me personally, I found that course absolutely amazing. And even if you just did the free one, which is the first week, if you've never meditated before, that's gonna be a really good help um, in, in kind of getting started. So I'd recommend that. If you've done meditation before, um, or you feel like you understand the process, but you just need something that maybe helps you with the timing of it, if you're gonna be at work, if you're looking for something that's kind of music based or sleep based, then again, the Calm app is a really good one to use as well. So I recommend um, trying out one of those if you want to get get it, get something um, outside of yourself to stimulate you into a meditation. And then really interestingly, because I didn't know this, um, is that taking magnesium also really helps to counteract the cortisol. So I take my magnesium right at the end of the day before I go to bed and I knew that it was helping me to sleep um, and I knew that it was supposed to help me to sleep but I didn't quite know what was happening, why why that was working. So now I understand that what the magnesium does is encourages the cortisol levels to drop which triggers the, um, the sleep process and we'll get into that when I do a proper um, sleep video, a bit more of the science behind that I need to look into. Um, but if you were finding that during the day you were very... Um, anxious and you felt like your cortisol levels were quite high or if you've been to the doctor and you know that your cortisol levels are very high then um, either taking some magnesium or finding some foods that are high in magnesium and maybe eating those um, kind of in the afternoon leading up to bedtime so you can start to really relax um, before going to sleep it's definitely um, a really good idea because again sleep is vitally important of course it just is vitally important it doesn't matter what you're suffering with um, or what you're trying to achieve in life if you don't get enough sleep everything's going to be harder so anything that kind of supports you in the sleep is also going to support you in dealing with everything else while you're awake <laughs> so um, I thought that was quite an interesting little subject um, it's definitely something that we suffer with um, with PCOS because we're naturally just a little bit more stressed out. Um, our bodies are already on a pretty high alert for everything. So hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully you can get something from it. Um, if you did, then obviously give the video a like. If you want to learn a little bit more about these kind of things when it comes to um, supplementing and supporting your PCOS on a daily basis, then do hit the subscribe button. Um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.